So in a previous video, we had looked at starting with an ionic formula, how do we get to a name? Well, now we're going to start with a name and get to an ionic formula. Guys, let's start with an example. Potassium carbonate. Okay, so we have the IUPAC name, potassium carbonate. We want to get to the formula for potassium carbonate. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this down into our two ions that we would have. So potassium, well potassium is a group 1A metal, which means we know it's always going to make a plus 1 charge ion. Then we have carbonate, CO3 2 minus, the polyatomic ion. Okay, so an easy way to identify that we have a polyatomic ion ends with that 8 ending. That would give us an idea. 8, 8, those are good ways for us to recognize that they are polyatomic ions. So we have this polyatomic ion. Now we need to combine these two ions in a way that makes it electrically neutral. We can do that by applying the crisscross rule. We go ahead and we take and make the charge of one, the magnitude of charge of one, the subscript of the other. Okay, so here we would have our potassium would make the subscript of the carbonate one. Our carbonate, negative two, would make the subscript of our potassium two. Okay, we're doing the magnitude. So it's become K2. CO3. Okay, so we see this is going to be electrically neutral. Plus two for both of our potassiums together, negative two for our carbonate. So this would be our chemical formula for potassium carbonate. So now let's look at another one that includes a post transition metal. Okay, so let's go ahead and say that we have 10, 4 sulfide. Right, so we're dealing with 10 fuller sulfide. Let's get to the ionic formula for this. Well, we have 10 here. That would be Sn. And we're given this Roman numeral. Now, we should remember that Roman numeral means the charge of my 10. So that would be 10 4 plus. Sulfide, well, that would be the sulfur ion. And the sulfur ion is group 6A, so we know it's going to make a negative 2 charge. It doesn't have multiple possible charges, just that one. So again, we can apply the crisscross rule here, and we get to Sn2, S4. Now if we go back to some previous work where we did where we talked about ionic compounds, we remember that an ionic formula has the lowest possible ratio between two elements to make it neutral. Well, this isn't the lowest possible ratio right now, 2 and 4. So what we can do is we divide both of those subscripts by 2, that would give us Sn, S2. And that would give us our neutral chemical formula of 10, 4 plus and S2 minus. Okay, and so we see that we applied this with using the crisscross rule, but we had to reduce the number uh, for our subscripts for each of these.